Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video we're having a look at the new Sonoff Gen 2 Cam Slim camera. So if you want to buy the Sonoff Cam Slim Gen 2 uh, you can buy it directly from the Sonoff website which is itead.cc or itiad if you want. Uh, so you can buy it directly from there and you can also get uh, a discount through my code that's now on the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can get 10% off your purchase if you use this uh, discount code when you check out. So let's just go and have a look at the camera itself and see what they've got on the web page. So it's $19.90 in US dollars. Obviously that will get converted up. So this is the Cam Slim Gen 2. Uh, there are various offers on here as well and details. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see here the plugs, plug types. If you're in the UK, you want type G. Uh, other countries are available as well. Obviously, you can also buy the uh, SDHC memory cards in here as well if you want to. We can see the price, $3 for the, for the plug adapter. Um, it's very good value, I think. Uh, so there's loads of details on here about the actual uh, Gen 2 camera. Obviously, we'll be having a look at that in a moment anyway, um, such as the, you know, the motion detection, which I haven't tried yet, um, and the RTSP and getting it into Home Assistant and loads of other things like that. So if you kind of want to buy it direct from the website, please do. I'll also put a link to the camera uh, page in the description of the video below and also uh, details about the discount code in there just in case you forget it. Right, so here we have the Sonoff Cam Slim Gen 2. Now, Sonoff don't make a lot of different cameras. They only make uh, two, really, and one of those is going to be discontinued soon. Uh, so this one will be the kind of the only one there is. If you want to see the original version of this, the Gen 1, then have a look at my other video uh, right now, uh, and then come back here to compare them. But uh, in this one, there have been a few changes, but not many in the kind of hardware side, just more kind of in the software side, I would say, uh, and slight design changes as well between the two. Um, but let's sort of have a look around the box and then we'll open the box up. So first of all, on the front, uh, you can see that the camera looks different than the original version. Uh, and they're also uh, highlighting that it's got a camera hibernation on it and human detection on it as well. So if we go straight around the back, what we're going to see is it's still 1080p, full HD, uh, gives alerts, two-way audio, motion detection, night vision. You can hibernate the camera, as I just said. There's support for cloud storage, but you do have to pay um, a subscription for that. And then the good old RTSP protocol, in case you want to um, put the feed into some other program like Home Assistant. So the input for this is a 5 volt 1 amp uh, input. Now you don't get a plug with this if you want to put it onto the mains. You do need to order one with it. And if you look on the screen when you come to make the order um, on their website, what you'll see is that you can choose between your country's uh, plugs that you need. They're quite cheap actually uh, from kind of Itiad website. Uh, they're not a bad price. So I'd probably order one of those with it. Uh, the camera pixels, 2 million pixels, lens aperture f2. Uh, the interface type on the back is a type c interface and it's still 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi uh, what else can i tell you about it the working temperature is minus 10 to plus 40 degrees c uh, and it has a cloud storage maximum on it sorry cloud storage and a micro sd card or tf card 180 uh, 128 gig uh, maximum for the tf card and inside you're going to get uh, some insulation stickers, the camera, uh, two screws, um, some raw plugs or screw anchors and a quick guide and the two meter cable. So I think they've probably extended the cable. It's quite a long cable in this uh, two meters, which is pretty good. So let's just turn it over and have a quick look at the side. So you can obviously integrate this with other products. So the wireless door sensors to do alarms. Um, obviously, the smart LED bulbs with motion detection would turn them on and other things such as, you know, smart switches to open curtains and things like that as well. Right. 
Okay, let's open her up and have a look straight inside. So as soon as you open it up, basically you get the camera looking at you uh, on the left and then the cable is on the right. So let's just start with the cable to start with. Uh, this is just the USB cable in here, nothing special. Uh, as I said, USB-C, USB, USB-C on the other end, two meters in length. And then get the camera out. And it's slightly it's slightly changed in design. Um, we've got the QR code on the side and the uh, SD card or TF card, should I say, on the side there. USB-C on the back. We've got the speaker on the back as well. And a reset button on the other side. And then the new kind of design, the new kind of uh, square black front there. I don't know why they don't make it all white. That would probably look a lot better in my house anyway. And then a new base. So it can still swivel up and down, left and right. Um, but as close as you can get to the back is about there uh, if you're looking at it. But the problem is the USB cable or the USB-C cable is not angled. It's straight. So the problem you then get, which I've seen, is that that's going to hit the wall if you've got it on a wall. If you're just sitting it up, then it'll be fine. But if you've got it on a wall, then your angle uh, has to be quite high. I mean, the angle of the wall would have to be somewhere uh, about there, I suppose, to get the cable away because it's going to hit the wall. So you're going to be sort of angling down a fair bit if you're going to be putting it on the wall. So that's one thing to kind of uh, note that it's not a kind of a right angled cable in the back. Uh, the other big difference, obviously, it's got quite a slip pad kind of grip on the bottom here if you're just sitting on a table. But on the original version, you actually put the back plate on the wall first and then clipped it to the back plate. Uh, and I've still got mine in the kitchen um, downstairs, but this one is slightly different. It does come with some screws, as I said. So what's going to happen is you're going to slide this onto the screws um, on the wall. And there is inside a little sticker. For you to put on the wall to drill your holes and of course we've got the instruction manual just loitering around in the bottom here so you can actually just slide that on i can't really show you it but you'd obviously screw it in there and then pull it down onto the actual um, screws to get it into place so it will be quite secure right so we are in the uh, ewe link app you can see my other cam slim at the top there already so i'm just going to add plus sign at the top then i'm going to add a device and say next. Oh, it's found it straight away. No messing about this time. I think the first edition had like an audio sound that you had to pick up. This one's done differently this time. So I'm going to say yes to that. Great. Green tick. Next. Uh, so Alexa has found that already as well. So not a lot to do there. If you want to add it to your sort of um, Echo Dot software. So I'll leave the name as it is and then just tap on next. And then I'm going to not share it, but I'm just going to say done. And here it is straight underneath or straight above the other one. So let's tap into it. I'm actually just going to take the sticker off the front so we don't get a awful picture. So you can see here we've got sleep mode, motion detection, device event alarm album the plan where you can get a free trial and playback of your video uh, video still shots talking and the speaker as well there's nothing coming through on it at the moment but i think oh there we go so there i am on it fantastic so that is quite clear that's quite nice just put my head in the way of the light 100k 150k a second just dropped a little bit then um, it's just around that i don't know what else we can get up to let's have a look so current version 107 and we can do a firmware update on that so let's do that and it's now upgrading it so while we're waiting, we've got the user manual in there as well. We've got the third party platforms in here, uh, the usual suspects, 
We can assign a location, we can share it, which I already had the option to do and I didn't do. So we can set up smart scenes on here as well. So different kind of actions. If then kind of triggers, like I've got on some of my other things, uh, you can turn the indicator light off if you want to on the uh, camera. Cloud storage, which I'm not subscribed to. Uh, motion detection, oh good, the firmware's done. Uh, motion detection is turned off. Let's go into that. It's basically a matter of just turning it on and then motion is stored in the videos on the micro SD card, but I don't have a micro SD card in it at the moment. Uh, local recording, yeah, there's no micro SD card in it at the moment, but you can format your card and set it to different record modes if you did have one in it. Uh, you can rotate the view of the camera. A few more settings in here. We've got speaker volume, mic volume, uh, sleep mode schedule, so we can add a schedule for it to go to sleep. RTSP, privacy zones, uh, watermark on the camera and restart the camera. And then we've got my Wi-Fi settings, night vision is set to auto. We can have alarm settings as well. And that's about it for this screen. So 109 is the latest version as we speak in kind of mid-October 2024. I've expected an error because it did an update. And there we go. We probably won't notice any difference, but that is what it can do. There we go, it takes a snapshot, or we could take a video. We can have the speaker on. We can have the speaker on. And then get some horrendous feedback. Now we've got an alarm on the album or the plan. There you go, that's part of the uh, local. There's my snapshot that I took just now. But otherwise, the camera looks pretty good. I think what we should do is turn the lights off and see then what it looks like. Okay, so we're slowly getting darker. Let's turn this light on. Ooh. Oh, there we go. It's just gone to night vision. Uh, mainly because there's a bit of glare on the uh, computer screen. There you go, that's what it looks like in night vision. Very dark in this room at the moment. Just some glare on my glasses from the computer screen. I've got makes my jacket top look white. Uh, yeah, so that looks all right. So I've just come into the Amazon uh, app as well. You can see it says Cam S2 connected. So I'm just going to tap on that. So where is my camera? I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Uh, other? Go downstairs will do. Could have skipped that though. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, continue. Thank you very much. Done. So it's on, but what can we do? Oh, we get the live view. I say live. Yeah. One, two, three. That's pretty quick actually, uh, even within the Amazon app. So we've got speaker and microphone as well. Uh, and then there's some settings on the top right here, but not much else to say that it's just enabled and it's on. Oh, and I've turned it off, which is quite unique. And I've turned it back on again. So we're in Home Assistant now, and uh, instead of going to the Son Off section, I'm going to go straight to generic camera. So what I'm going to do now is add device and you need to add the stream source URL, which starts with RTSP and choose TCP. Now, if you want to find the details on that, what you have to do is the easiest way to do it really is if once you've added the cam to the eWe link software is go up to the three dots on the top, right? Scroll down to more settings, choose that. And then you can see RTSP. So you click that. You have to turn it on first, so we have to enable it. And then what we'll see is we'll see the IP address and we'll see the account and the password. So we need to enter those into this. So once you've entered the password, then I can click create a link. And then you will see your link on there. So what you then have to do is type that into the stream source and hit submit. 
There we go. So once we've entered that in, then we can choose an area. I don't know where I'm putting it yet, but I'm going to say the hallway and then finish. Now this is on. So I've actually added this in. If I actually go to edit on here, it's actually got the wrong uh, details on it at the minute, but I'll go back and do this. Um, it's kind of got the wrong entity, swapped it around, but basically it's set to live. It's a picture entity card configuration. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like, really. You just choose the entity and then add it on and play with the settings afterwards. OK, so that's nearly the end of the video. Uh, let's just sum up a little bit between the differences between the two cameras, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. So as you can see there on the screen now, it, I was correct about the pairing. Uh, on the new one, you do QR code pairing or just kind of add it to your app. Uh, and the original one did sound pairing when it started up. They're both um, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz. But as you can see there, there are some ticks that are in the Gen 2 that are missing from the original uh, Cam Slim. And that's the human detection, uh, the active zones, uh, the sleep mode, and the privacy zone settings where you can black out sort of certain parts that you don't want to record. So overall, I think it's a good little camera, to be honest. Um, the original one I've still got in the kitchen works really well, whether it's in nighttime mode or daytime mode. Um, it's good, got a good, really good field of view for a moderately sized sort of room as well. Um, and it works in Home Assistant quite well. Uh, and it also works in the app at the same time because it's kind of Wi-Fi. So that's nice. Uh, so, and the second one seems to be just as good, really. Um, and it's got a few added features to it, which is good. The only thing I can moan about, obviously, is the angled USB uh, cable coming out the back of it uh, could be an issue if you're trying to uh, attach the Gen 2 to a, uh, a wall or a flat surface and not have it on its normal kind of stand. Right, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like, uh, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And don't forget, if you want any of the Sonoff products, uh, look in the video description below or at the beginning of the video for my discount code where you can get 10% off uh, all products. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.